Hello and welcome to Secrets Mystery Manor. I'm your host, Psychic Zelda Kelly. Warning, this podcast may contain sensitive material. It is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer and listening discretion is advised. Hello, everyone, and welcome, welcome to the podcast. I'm your host, Zelda Kelly, and today we have another Halloween edition. That's right, and this one is very exciting. I love this one, and I know that you will too. It was a unanimous vote in my Facebook House of Zelda group that we do, we talk about, we perform a new recording for you (laughs) about our friend, the werewolf. Friend, yes. Why a friend? Well, because he has been with us through the centuries. Now, he's not really been a good friend. I can tell you that. Because he will eat animals and people alike. Yikes. But imagine. Stay with me now. We're in the castle together. Yeah, that's right. I said castle. We're in the castle together. And it is a full moon. A big, bright, little cast of yellow full moon. We're watching outside. We are amazed at how this moon is illuminating the grounds of the castle. It's a cool night and the clouds are kind of drifting by. You can see the silhouettes from the light of the moon. And all of a sudden, we hear a howling. Now this isn't your normal wolfy dog howling this is the howling of a man changing into a werewolf now here's something that you can really imagine you hear the crackling of the breaking of the bones while this man turns into this werewolf He now is over six foot four. He's heading to the seven foot category. There's dark, thick hair and fur that's growing all over him. His feet now are changing to that of a wolf. His back legs Look, where he doesn't have, a human doesn't have back legs, <laughs> but now they resemble a back legs because he's going to start running on all fours. His hands now are growing claws. Mm-hmm. His face now is pushing out and he has a snout. Lots of sounds coming from the background because the forest is quiet and scary and the wind is blowing and there's all kinds of movement in the forest now because they know they have to get away. They smell it. This werewolf now is on the prowl. He's on the hunt for anything that's moving, anything that he can grab, anything that he can gnarl his canine teeth into. He'll grab the first animal and shake it until it's dead and consume it with just minutes. And he continues to do the same throughout the night. Stay out of his way, ladies and gentlemen, because the werewolf will come to you and he will have No regret or no remorse at that particular time of attacking a human being. Now the next morning, the man 
will not remember. He will not remember what had happened. The only thing that he will know is that, well, he's no longer clothed and he'll have to make it back to the castle. You see, we're witnessing all of this through the window and disbelief cannot believe our eyes what we've just seen. And we cling together because we hope and pray this werewolf does not come in to the castle. He will break down the doors and he will find us through his keen sense of smell. You get the picture. When I was a little girl, I, I loved this movie. And still today, love this movie. The 1941 Universal Studios, The Wolfman. Now, no one had really ever seen on film anything like this. This was kind of the first of its own kind. Lon Chaney Jr. played the main character who turned into a wolf only after he was bitten by a gypsy man. And they actually, <laughs> he and a couple of young lady friends went to see this gypsy psychic. Yes, yes, I know. And went to see her. She did a reading for them, but she looked at him and thought, oh no, he's the next one on the list. Check him off. Goodbye. I'm not going to give away the, the whole movie. Most of you have probably already seen it. It's an old black and white movie and the special effects for that time were really pretty cool. Now, yeah, you know, but it's really fun and really interesting. But that was the first time that it was ever said that you could turn into a werewolf by being bitten by another werewolf. If you survived, that is. So this man survived and of course the only thing in this movie that could take him out would be a silver bullet and or a silver a silver stake that you could bludgeon him with. And that was it. You gotta make sure you're a pretty good aim. Unless of course you know, you cut him up or something like that. We're not getting into that. That's kind of gross. Okay, so we're going to leave that. But you get the picture. Because a werewolf, you talk about 10 feet tall and bulletproof. A werewolf is just that. He can sustain attacks. He can live through battles. Things don't bother him. You can throw something at him and he doesn't barrel. He just gnarls at you with these big fangs and teeth that much more. Can't run from him. He runs at speeds that are unbelievable. The strength of 30 men. Oh, even more. Use your imagination. You can see him. I know that you do. He's sitting right there. Well, let's put a smile on his face so he's friendly so we can get through this, okay? <laughs> okay. So, let's go back a little bit. And for the sake of time, I want to talk about where does a werewolf come from? Well, of course, there are a lot of mythological type creatures that can turn into humans or seem like a human. But the werewolf is the only creature that does not keep a human shape like a monster, I'm going to say. Well, you've got a zombie. You've got a mummy. Well, there's even the invisible man. There's a vampire. And then there's a werewolf. Even a ghost can resemble that of a human being. But now you have a werewolf and he is, well, for all intents and purposes, shape-shifting into this dog, I was going to say dogmatic, <laughs> no pun intended, this 
I'm going to say wonderful beast, magnificent. You know, the definition of the werewolf is definitely common knowledge. We all know that. We know that a wolf man, a werewolf, and the werewolf that comes from the German language is W E R W O F. It's Wer Wolf in German. But I got to tell you, these werewolf stories come from all around the world. Now I have a question, you know, let's let's question this for a minute, okay? Let's question. Of course back then in the 16th century, 14th, 15th century in Europe, of course we didn't have internet or we didn't have any type of it except any any written, no phones except for people would write these things down. And this spread worldwide. Amazing. So it really depends on the variety of werewolf that you're interested in. So in Russia, werewolves, okay? Yeah, they have werewolves in Russia. That They're saying that any ch child that was born December 24th or Christmas Eve would become a werewolf. <laughs> That's a tough one, right? Oh my gosh. Hold out, mother, till the 25th. You didn't make the 23rd. Oh, wow. Okay. So the Russians also believe that you are a man or a woman could be a werewolf and that you would turn into a werewolf if you offended God and the werewolf that you had turned into would be your punishment. Mm, that's scary. Better look out. If you're in Sweden, in the 16th century, werewolves were born as men, but were transformed by drinking a magic cup of beer and saying a special chant. <laughs> now, side trip here, I know many who have had that magical cup of beer and had that chant and they turn into many things as we know, but who knows? Werewolf, yes. Okay. So, other places in Europe, France, Germany, any man or woman could turn into a werewolf. And sometimes it was said that it, you could accomplish this if you slept outside on a Wednesday or a Friday. And if the full moon shined directly on the person's face for the whole entire night, the person would be transformed. Yikes. Um, there's other methods, of course, of becoming a werewolf, and some are culture, some are legendary, some are, you know, who, who knows? Some of the oldest types of transformations that you could turn into that's been documented and recounted as legend, allegedly a werewolf, is that if you took off all of the all of your clothes and you instead put on the skin of a whole wolf, and if you got the right wolf and the magic happened, you could turn into a werewolf. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of messy. And if you didn't like that, then if you wore a belt that was made out of the wolf's hide, you too could turn into a werewolf. Now, there's another thing, another way of transforming if you're interested. You could take a sip of water out of the footprint of a werewolf. So I guess all this has to happen organically. There's the footprint of a werewolf. You have to know, you have to label it as a werewolf. You got to make sure that there is natural or, you know, that it all happens like it's raining or dew. You get the picture. Okay. So lastly, the other way that you can make a werewolf is if mommy werewolf and daddy werewolf get together, then you can have a baby werewolf. 
<laughs> so, you know, that, that's interesting. So as we have gone through time, Hollywood, pictures, books, the werewolf has probably been one of the most celebrated, I'm going to say monsters. I don't like to call him a monster, but I guess he is, okay? He's been one of the most celebrated of all the monsters. And I think the top three are a werewolf, a vampire, and a mummy, which is kind of like slash the zombie thing, but you get it. I've always been intrigued by the werewolf. I don't know what it is. I've just always been intrigued by this. And it's, it's very interesting because some of you that know me know that I have an old digital library and I had to have these books put on a digital format because a lot of them are falling apart and some were from the 1500s. So I was looking, doing some research for this podcast and I found in my encyclopedia of occultism, of occultism rather, and this was copyrighted and printed in 1920, so it is now 101 years old. Wow. So in this book, it talks about werewolves. And it talks about vampires and werewolves. This is one of the most interesting encyclopedias of occultism. And when I say that, I'm not saying that, you know, this is anything devil worship or anything like that. No, no, no. That was a name back then that they had for this. Now it turned from occultism into, I suppose, New Age. That's another subject. But it talks about psychic ability. It even talks about demonology. It talks about a lot of different things. And I was able to find the section on werewolves. Now, the study of werewolves, so let me see if this I can say this correctly, is lycanthropy, lycanthropy, whatever, lycanthropy. <laughs> okay, that's it, a lichen, there you go. You know it by the underworld, right? So, this is interesting. I don't know why I couldn't say that word, but you get it. Okay, you get a little laugh. So now we get to have, see some kind of older stuff on this, right? So we're going to put this Hollywood aside. I'm going to put the Hollywood aside. And now, um, there we go. Okay, so I want to read a little bit. This is from the Encyclopedia of Occultism. And it says, a man temporarily or permanently transformed into a wolf from the Anglo-Saxon ver, which is W-E-R, a man, and the wolf, W-U-L-F, and I said that was Germanic, and that is also, um, from the, uh, yeah, I read that. Okay, it is a phase of lycanthropy. Ah, okay. And in ancient and medieval times was a very frequent occurrence. It was, of course, in Europe where the wolf was one of the largest carnivorous animals. And with the superstitious gained currency, similar tales in other countries, usually introducing bears, tigers, and so forth. They had the bears and tigers in the country of India. I got to tell you, in Armenia, they really believed that if you were the seventh son born, that you were automatically uh, born a werewolf. And a lot of these families would not allow the seventh son to live. I mean, that's very sad and very unfortunate that this really was taken so seriously. I guess so back then. Um, because even if a wolf 
would attack sheep or something like that, or even a human, like the wolf and animal, they would think that it would be a werewolf. So in 1920 in Armenia, the president declared that there were no more werewolves in that country. Now, isn't that interesting? No more werewolves. And so now, you would think, you know, I got to say this, in 1920, that's not very long ago. Hmm. That kind of gets to you a little bit, doesn't it? All right. So now, we have all types of different werewolves now, okay? There are two kinds of werewolves, though, that really, really stand out. There's the voluntary and there's involuntary. And the voluntary would be those people who, because of their taste for human flesh and withdrawn from their fellows and their, their other peers and other people around them, would appear to have a certain amount of magical power and or at least sufficient enough to transform themselves into an animal shape at will. So that would be a shapeshifter. They would be affected by merely disrobing and taking off a girdle made of human skin or putting on a similar belt of wolf skin, obviously a substitute for an entire wolf. Yikes, that's crazy. But involuntary werewolves were often those persons transformed into an animal shape because of the commission of sin and condemned to pass so many years in that form. Because I'll tell you, if you are not, if you turn into a werewolf and you are not killed as a werewolf, then you really are doomed to live forever, just like the vampire thing, right? That's scary in its own self. So, so now they're saying if you turn against God, that all of this. So, I'll tell you what. Um, and it talks about here in this one book in Armenia is thought that a sinful woman would be condemned to pass seven years in the form of a wolf. And such a woman, a demon appears and bringing a wolf skin and commands her to put it on. And the moment that she does, she becomes a wolf. And with all her nature of a wild beast devouring her own children and those of strangers wandering forth through the night. And my goodness, that's, that's horrible. But, you know, here's the funny thing. There's a really romantic side of this werewolf story because in France, especially in France, werewolves, <laughs> werewolves, were okay, we can do this. Werewolves were one of the most remarkable instances of love stories. Well, the French do it the best, right? Well, what can we say? What can we say? But right now we're going to do what we do best and we're going to break for this very special commercial message. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Hello everyone. This is your friend Zelda Kelly at extension 11 at psychicsecrets.com. Are you tired of sniffing around every corner for answers? Does it just seem like a daily task that you're barking up the wrong tree constantly? Well, come on over to PsychicSecrets.com. That's PsychicSecrets.com. There, you can get a reading that you can really sink your canines into. Are you tired of howling at the moon, of barking in the wind? Well, weep no more because you've come to the right place. You can book online with an advisor. You can chat with an advisor. And you can also have a video call with an advisor. How exciting. So come on over there. Say hello. Stop by. Read our blog. Listen to our previous podcasts. We'll be glad to talk with you, help you, 
and I know that you'll be so glad that you did. So stop baying at the moon, okay? Come on over, and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now. Hello, and we're back. Thank you so much for allowing us to pause for that very important break. <laughs> okay, I missed you. All right, let's continue our talk on the werewolf. Now, our buddy the werewolf also accompanied the witch trials. They had werewolf trials, if you can believe that. Uh, I do I do believe it. You know, people, when they get scared, um, they, they need that projection to, uh, okay, we're not going to get into the psyche of all that. But I do believe that. And, you know, there, there was a very, very, very famous case. And that was back in, oh, let me see. Actually, this is very interesting. The most famous case was that of a German farmer. His name was Peter Stump. <laughs> S-T-U-M-P-P, -P, Stump. Um, who was accused of werewolvery, witchcraft, cannibalism, and a whole plethora of things that you should not do. Evil. They tortured and they got a confession of crime. They So they tortured him. Yeah, okay, well, people do confess to get that to stop. So they tortured him and he confessed to the crimes. And he was executed on October 31st on Halloween, 1589. So that was in the year 1589. So back in the day, in the 15th century, they had basically these posses that would go through and hunt down what they felt were werewolf types. If there was any type of loss of livestock or anything like that, they would they would all gather and they would try to um, kill off what they thought were werewolves or pack of werewolves. So during the 15th century, a lot of that happened, but it really started phasing out during the 18th century. And so what they did was they started persecuting the werewolves and associated all of those with that type of folklore. And they wrapped it all up and they went into that witch hunt phenomenon. So a lot a very innocent people lost their lives. It was witches, people who thought they were witches, which they were not, and people who thought there were werewolves, which they were not. And unfortunately, you know, those things happen in our history, and we can't do anything to rectify that or make that any better. But here are some very important scientific explanations. Clinical lycanthropy. Oh, I said that good, didn't I? Wow. All right. Clinical lycanthropy is a rare disorder. And some people believe that they can become animals or mostly wolves. And it has a symptom of schizophrenia. So now... It's a mental disorder. People believe that. And they can actually hallucinate and really believe that they can turn into a werewolf. Hypertrichnosis is an excessive hair growth condition. So that didn't help matters any. You see people that had this, and especially back at the turn of the century, they would put a lot of these people into these circuses. It was very unfortunate and very, very horrible for them. Um, but that's also, so it was hypertrichosis. I said that wrong the last time. Most sorry there for that. So 
we have a lot of that happening, okay? And then the werewolvery thing kind of died down after 1941. Yeah, I was around. Lon Chaney Jr., he did a great job. Then there were the Hammer films of uh, Hammer Productions in the UK. And those were really fun. Oh, the, that whole group of Hammer films, you know, they came out with The Mummy and several of uh, vampire films that were really, they were budget. They were literally B-movie types. But Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee and Boris Karloff made those films. Man, oh man, they were great films. To this day, one of, the, one of my favorite from the Hammer Studios is The Mummy from 1954, starring Boris Karloff as The Mummy, but Peter Cushing. Oh, he was my favorite actor from Hammer Films. Anyway, back to The Werewolf. So we had all that, and in the 60s, they produced a movie that was about a werewolf, and it, and it, it did okay. It wasn't that banner. It wasn't like the, the vampires or mummies or any of those things. But then, in 1981, I remember I had, I was a, I was a young woman, and I had to race to see this. It was an American werewolf in London. I have never seen anything like that before. Even the picture, even the photograph for the movie of those two young men looking behind them, oh wow. <clears throat> the transformation scenes, they were all mechanical. A lot of them were mechanical because they didn't have the special effects that we do now. They were terrific. That movie started the craze. And then of course we had all this about Van Helsing and then we had more werewolves and then we had the lichens and the vampires were getting together and falling in love and then we had you know all types of different movies Underworld, that was a good one, had vampires and werewolves in. And of course, the Twilight series I, are, were, were, was Jacob considered a werewolf? Well, I guess so. I just kind of like that whole Indian tribal American, yeah, mess with me, I turn into this werewolf and we'll take you all out type of idea, right? I loved that. That was one of the coolest things I think that we've seen on film for transformations from a human being into a werewolf. So there you have it, my friends, a brief and concise history of, I'm going to try to say it again, like lycanthropy. <laughs> Not too bad, right? Anyway, of werewolvery. And I, I'm interested to hear how you feel about this. I do know some people who feel that they, at some time, have heard a vampire, I'm sorry, not a vampire, a werewolf baying at the moon. I don't know, a lot of these animals, they can sound big, bad, and dangerous, right? So write down below, write to us, tell us how you really think, and I hope you enjoyed this podcast because I really enjoyed bringing it to you. And we're going to continue our Halloween October series of monsters. And next week, we'll see what happens. But before we go, I want to invite you all over to my Facebook group, House of Zelda. We have a lot of fun over there. And Psychic Secrets have allowed me to partner with them at House of Zelda and we run specials like <clears throat> five minutes for free we have 10 minutes for $9.99 wow those are great specials you can get a lot accomplished in 10 minutes and if you're a first-time caller call in 
you get 30 minutes at $1 per minute rate. That's unheard of. But, well, only until now, obviously. <laughs> so come on over and book with one of us. I'm Extension 11. You're more than welcome to book with me. I'd love to talk with you. I love to bring you this information. We talk about the paranormal in my group. We talk about psychic phenomenon, and we really have a lot of fun. So come on over, join, and take advantage of those specials that we put out there for you. And I want to thank Psychic Secrets. That's www.psychicsecrets.com for sponsoring this podcast. We have a lot of fun, and we upload every Saturday. So until next Saturday, don't be out there baying at the moon. Because you just never know. Bye for now. So this was a very, very famous poem that was written exclusively for the Universal Wolfman from 1941. It is said that Wolfsbane is an herb that can actually cure you from becoming a werewolf. It can protect you with, as an amulet or an, as a talisman. I think this is very interesting. But I love this. This is my favorite part of the movie. Thanks again. Even a man who is pure in heart and says his prayers by night may become a wolf when the wolfbane blooms and the autumn moon is bright. Until next time, thanks so much for listening. I just love this. Don't you?